<laughs> well, hello, 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 hello again. <laughs> yes, indeed. This is uh, Dennis, and this is June, and therefore this is the June support group tape. We're making this tape high upon Mount Shasta, <laughs> as usual, and it's a gorgeous day. It's... Um, it's exceptionally beautiful up here for June because we've just had several snowfalls. The snow's about, oh, I don't know, it's still probably about a foot here at the top. And it's beautiful. The mountain, she's covered in white and she's magnificent. She's gleaming. Looks like we've got a little more water than we had counted on. Thank you, God. Thank you so much. And it's just basically beautiful up here. The birds are singing and the... The sun is, is glowing and the mountains are beaming and, and I'm feeling pretty darn good. I'd like to sort of check in on you out there and, and see if you've been really growing. Now this is actually June um, 5th. And so let's look back at our last two months. Well, not even that, f well, let's look back at our last year. And let's take a look at ourselves and notice that within, say, the last few months or the last couple weeks, have you made an exceptional change within your growth? In other words, this is what I'd like to point out. You were just uh, doing all the stuff that you've normally been doing, having a good time, thinking about God, knowing that you're God, smiling, beaming. <clears throat> but things may have been a little tight out there, uh, a little unusual. And then all of a sudden, Let's just say that you started to notice that people have been observing you differently. People, and you have been observing yourself differently to the degree that people might be talking to you differently. People might be um, looking to be a friend of yours, bringing in things that in the past people would not have been doing. I guess I'm bringing all these things up because it's graduation time on the planet. And a lot of people are graduating. It's sort of like everything is starting to grow into a new form as kids come out of grade school high school and college they're perceiving themselves differently and I've observed that that energy has been around the planet more so now than ever it's almost as if we all graduated and and you know how you felt when you graduated there was like especially if you came out of high school or college or grade school although that was kind of far back uh, for some of us only uh, think about high school and grade school. There was a change in you. There was like, yes, I'm another person. I'm, I'm grown up. I'm altering. And I guess basically, I would like to bring that up around this graduation time because I've observed that most of us, <laughs> at least within the DNA group, or if you're getting these tapes, or if you're in this energy at all, there seems to be some sort of a unique graduation that's coming up. It's sort of like, um, oh, I don't know. Um, we're changing. We're growing. We're a different person. We're a, we're a whole brand new being somehow inside. And the beauty is we're getting to see it. I guess I'm repeating it because I want you to really take a look at yourself. And if you haven't noticed that little leap in growth, it's not going to be progression. It's going to be a little tiny leap or a great big giant walloping kazam leap. We're honoring ourselves for being more. What has happened is the universe has poured out an exceptional amount of blessings to those individuals who have been working on themselves. And I presume that that's you. Uh, <laughs> I presume that's why you've been getting these tapes. I've also observed that we have grown in a strength with inside of ourselves. There's a, uh, a new person reflection. The world is honoring, honoring us for our growth. It's saying, hey, you know what? Take a look at yourself and see what you've been able to do. See that you've been able to grow. See these things. The universe has given us the quantum leap and we've worked hard and all of these things are reflecting in our world. Sometimes we may not notice it and so I'm just giving you a little recall. 
Well, that was it for that. <laughs> How are you, gods? I'm so pleased to feel your growth. I'm so excited about our growth as a whole. All the things that I've talked about is in growth for the group, growth for the individual, growth in the divinity, growth in you realizing that you're God. All these things, if I've, as I've observed, are really paying off. Your work on yourself has created that quantum leap. You'll all be experiencing it, if not already, soon. Because this is the summer where we do our major graduation in life. And it's been fun. And it is going to be more fun. And it is fun as I speak. That way the past, the past, the present, and the future, as you know, are all simultaneous. And by being in present time, I can say past and future. Now today... As I was hanging out for a Dave, it was sort of like, okay, what can we do? How can we excite them? Let's give them a baffle who smash all oobly doobly type tape where you can just kind of sit back and go, hey, you know what? It's working. Yeah, I'm feeling good about myself. Yes, I am in the divinity. Yes, I am that God being. Yes, I am all of these things. I am growing, I am excited in my growth, I am a profound being. As we grow, as our profoundness begins to expand, let's get into a subject now that can really get our teeth down into it. I'd like to talk about masters and mastery and you. You see, we've been... Uh, working relatively hard on ourselves, And we've also been encouraging ourselves in different ways. This is such <clears throat> a good title that I will probably do another tape on it that won't be in the series because I have a lot of material around this particular scenario. And I'm going to talk about masters, but I'm also going to talk about a lot of other things. And so, when you see another tape that comes out, and the title will be Masters, Mastery, and You, it won't be what the same material is on this tape. I like the title so much, I just thought I'd throw it out to you and check and see, but I'm actually going to do a little more on this tape. Well... I can't say that because the other tape is, oh well, never mind. When you see another tape that comes out with the title, You, Mastery, and Masters, it won't be like this one. <laughs> okay, on your tape, this one here, I'd like to talk about you as the master. What is it that you have been doing unto yourself to make this all work um, what is it that we as a personality have been bringing into our master program as we've grown as we've gone through all of the tapes and workshops and and the support group teaching scenario we've been working on ourselves to achieve what to achieve something called mastery. In the workshops, I call you guys masters all the time. And I say that because I'm, I'm encouraging inside of you these things that will encourage the personality to stretch forward in, an, in its acknowledgement of its divinity. See, what I teach is, is that you're God. And the way I put that out is simply, I say, hey, look at here. You're God. You're part of the whole. If you're even breathing, you're part of the whole. Because you are taking into yourself space and you are blowing out space. Which means you're taking in more God and putting more God out. And if you indeed are taking the space in as air, you are indeed taking in Godness, which means you are part of the whole. Because part of your body that you are taking in is space. It's air. It's the breath. It's the prana. Okay? 
Now, inside of us, we have this thing called a personality. And when we first hear that we're God and that we're part of the whole, because we have so many linear concepts of God, we weren't really sure what that all meant. By listening to the, de by the Dennis's space story, you will get an understanding that what we're talking about indeed is being part of the whole. And by perceiving the avenue that we can take air into ourselves and breathe it out, we are taking space into ourselves and bypassing it or passing it out, or we are taking God into ourselves and passing it out. And so now with a simple little understanding, yeah, we're part of the whole. So therefore, we're, we're God-like. Well, for our personality, sometimes this may be a little bit big of a bite to take. See, <clears throat> this is sort of a bite that says, hey, guess what? You're saying you're really God. And all of a sudden, the personality, based on the intellect's facts, goes, <laughs> well, I don't know if I can deal with this. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, it makes perfect linear sense. But my personality um, has been beaten up, and I have gone through blame so much, and I have so much self-criticism and self-doubt, and all of these other things that I've learned about myself as I've grown on this planet, that when I hear you tell me that I'm part of the whole, and therefore I'm God, and I do God-like things, my brain, which collects evidence that says, come on, look at the times you screwed these people over, look at the times you screwed that over, look at the times you took advantage in this situation, look at the times you took advantage in that uh, environment. And all of a sudden you're looking at the concept of, well, you know, if I'm God, I'm sure not acting like one. Okay. Now you hear that you're part of the whole, and it's time to act like you're God. Now, the personality has gained in its lifetime a lot of evidence that say you're not all that godlike in action. Now, what we need to do is take a look at ourselves when we were godlike in action. You see, our personality has to see what it's about, it has to see how we work and how we go together. Um, I'd like to point out that because we're used to seeing the negative part of ourselves, in other words, going, this isn't what I call a godlike action, when you're blowing um, your temper at an individual. However, let's spin that around. If you can see the negative aspects of yourself in that godlike view, you must be able to see the positive side of you. Now, in other words, if you see a lot of yourselves doing negativity out there in the world, in the past when you were younger, going, well, I don't know if I'm so godlike with all the stuff I used to do, I would like to point out that it is here and now, and what you are doing here and now is what is supporting your futuristic life. Now, Let's stay in the present time, okay, and let's go into the past, okay. If you feel you produce this much negativity, uh, let's just say you put, out, you put out this much disbelief that God exists. In order for that to exist, you must have put out the same amount of energy that God does exist. Okay, now, for all the negativity that you put out saying that these were not God-like actions that you did, Somewhere out there, you had to put out the same positive energy that there were a lot of godlike actions out there. Now, when you start to look at yourself, I want you to look at all of the positive stuff that you have done in godlike ways. I'll bet you that you've helped people just by saying things to them. I'll bet you that you've helped people just by smiling at them when they needed it. I'll bet you that you have helped places just by looking and smiling and saying, hey, blessings to these places. I'll bet you that you have done all of these things and have just totally forgot about it. I'll bet you that occasionally you even bless your food. And so what I would like to point out is, is that <clears throat> as many times as we think we're not doing godlike actions, we are doing godlike actions. 
What does this all mean? It means that the personality can start to see some of the godlike things that it's doing so that it can see how it's starting to master itself in those wonderful ways. Now, we're learning how to master ourselves. We have a personality. Our first thing to do is take a look at the personality. And we look at the personality and we say, hey, you know what? <clears throat> I don't really feel like I'm part of the whole just yet. I don't really feel that I can manifest a person out of nowhere because I know that's what God can do and I know I'm starting to learn about my mastery of that. And I know that as I talk to God, God's giving me more and more divine insight. So what is it that I can do in terms of mastery to understand myself? Well, the personality is the first thing. You need to tell your personality that you are a worthwhile human being and that you are totally worth anything that comes up. Because some of us look at ourselves as not the most... It, <laughs> the most... Um, colorful individual on the planet. In other words, lots of us are looking at ourselves, saying that, yeah, we're masters, except that when we look at ourselves, we see ourselves as another boring individual on the planet that really hasn't made quite a mark on changing the universe. And so, there's a part of our personality that says, yeah, I believe that we're part of the whole and we're part of God, except that when I'm looking at my, real, my reality here, I'm not quite seeing it. This is the personality. Let's take our personality. If we're going to grow it into the fact that we're part of the whole and therefore we're very, very godlike, our personality sometimes has to learn how to become important. It has to learn how to feel good about itself. Not that it has to be the president of a company or the person that runs a business or the individual that is making the world groove and turn and discover itself. All the personality has to realize is that something like God loves it so much it made it out of nothing. And therefore, the personality doesn't have to prove anything on the physical plane which would look good in the world's eyes. All the physical personality has to do is recognize that God loves it so much it made it out of nothing. Now, when it realizes that the Godhead loves it so much, it's able to realize that regardless what it is doing or what it is manifesting on the planet Earth, it is doing it through love. Because it's realizing that the only reason that it is even alive is because something loves it. Now, if we take ourselves and start putting more love into ourselves per se, then I notice that we start getting a handle on our mastery. See, we've got, to, we've got to start seeing all of the positive things that we've done. We've got to start collecting evidence to prove the fact that we're godlike. <clears throat> we need to start collecting evidence where it's sort of like, oh wow, I have done good things. Oh wow, I am producing good results in the world. We need to start saying to ourselves, wow, I am having a positive effect on my world. Now, the importance of that is, is that you're changing the whole world. And that's the part of the ego that you want to, to make happen. You don't have to be a special person. You don't have to have a special job. You don't have to be doing something very, very special on the planet to save it. All you have to do is be a human being aware of the fact that it's part of the whole and as such it can manifest that. Now I'm giving several different messages here. I hope I'm not too confusing, but I'm trying to put this all together for you. First, there's a part of the personality that doesn't believe in itself and only sees the negative attributes of itself because it's gained enough material to say, nah, I'm not really godlike, look at the time I did all of this. The next thing the personality needs to realize is that it is doing that out of a past picture and that it no longer needs to do that. What the personality needs to see now is that in present time, it can decide whether to be loving to people, places, or things, or spiteful to people, places, and things. And the personality must then begin to see what it is that it is doing in present time. If you're thinking, well, I've done so many terrible things, well, for all of the terrible things that you have done, there must be positive things equal to that energy that you can be doing now.